Good afternoon, everyone. It is six o'clock uh, on the channel clock, so I'll go by that time. Um, welcome on this lovely autumnal day. The first item is the evacuation procedure. Everybody in the room knows it, so I'm not going to read it out. We have no apologies. Any further declarations of interest? So they are the ones as printed on the agenda. Item four is the minutes of the last meeting. Is everyone happy to confirm their inaccurate record? Yes, sure. Any dissenters? No. Take that to read then. Public consultation, and we do have uh, one public speaker on item six and seven, council conduct. Okay. So we'll move straight to item six then, uh, the medium term financial plan. This report presents Cabinet with an interim update on the Council's medium term financial plan, October 2023. <coughs> Section 3 of the report gives background to the current national funding picture, including an overview of the spending round. This was announced in September and covers one financial year, 2020 to 2021. The most significant announcement for, council, for the Council in the spending round was the confirmation of the deferral of the Fair Funding Review and Business Rates Reset <coughs> for 12 months. The table at Section 4 sets out the financial position for the Council until 2023 based on a number of assumptions. This shows a potential funding gap of £750,000 over this period, although this will be dependent on the outcome of the longer term spending review, which is due to take place during 2020. Section 5 sets out forecasts for the capital programme and shows that funding sources over the life of the plan are extremely limited. The Council's earmarked reserve balances are shown in Section 6 and as this shows the balances are set to reduce from 10.65 million at April 2019 to 8.87 by April 2023. A risk and sensitivity analysis is set out at Section 6, 7, sorry, which is particularly important given the longer term uncertainties around local government funding. The plan will need to be updated as further information on longer term spending review becomes available and the recommendations are set out at section two. <coughs> There's no further ado, no quite council funding for you. Thank you very much, Chair. As always, I take a keen look at the uh, medium term financial numbers. It's one of the things I I love checking and looking at and seeing how things work. And it's fascinating to see how dependent we are on our council tax base now. Um, you know, almost nine million pounds this year, slightly over nine million pounds next year. I have, of course, found an error in the paperwork because the rise between 2011, sorry, 20, 1920 to 20, 20, 20, 20 to 21 is about 2.6% and not um, 2.99%. I, I raised this with Simone when I saw her earlier in the week. Be because the 2% um, the, the council tax rise, or, and then you add 2%, sorry, 1% on the council tax base, should mean the rise is about 3% a year. This rise in council tax base isn't just down to building more houses, but obviously part of it is, and new houses tend to be a higher council tax rate than older ones. But also the council tax base rises as we get less discounts from single person occupancy and also as people build extensions and then they sell the house on, things get reassessed. So council tax base rising is a natural thing and it's actually one of our few fairly secure increases in income. I'm also um, uh, fearful that the rate of house building, or, or happy, I don't know, uh, will slow slightly in the future. Um, and it's interesting that the Assumptions in here do not match the assumptions in the borough plan. The 1% rise in council tax base would equate to 500 or 600 houses a year, depending on how big they are, not the 1,000 or something in the borough plan. But in the risk analysis, and you've got risk and uncertainties at section 7, I think one big uncertainty is a big slowdown in the housing market, particularly the new housing. So uh, I, I do hope we actually include that as a risk going forwards. Um, but there's also the um, opportunity that actually the pressure on housing will reduce as migration into the borough reduces. Uh, I, I know the ONS figures are looking at a, a slowing down of people moving into the borough. Um, so it's all ups and downs. Um, and I'd just like to say finally, 
I do see a bit of optimism walking around the town centre and you know, some of the new works and going on. So there is hopefully going to be more business rates coming in. So it's not all a black picture and uh, a lot of things have taken a very long while to actually work their way through. But there are a few new units being used and a few new opportunities. Thank you very much. Are there any points of clarification? No, not for me. No, no. You, you state some figure is incorrect, um, Keith. Yeah. My understanding is that has been uh, checked and officers are... Simone, would you like to say that? Yeah, um, our financial services manager has double checked that the formula is on that table as you came to, to see me last week and he still has reviewed it. Correct. Um, 2.99%. Okay, just, just to clarify that. Um, very uncertain times at the moment, actually. I think there's uh, such a lot going on, but uh, setting a medium-term financial plan is not without difficulties at the moment. Anything you need to add, Simone? Uh, just to make Cabinet aware that last week there was a technical consultation published following the spending round. So um, the government consult on certain elements of the spending round before they issue the actual financial settlement end in December. Um, that in, indicates that there will be a full-scale review of the in-home spend bonus, that um, the scheme will continue for 2021, and um, that there will be a national consultation on the scheme post that, and indications are that the figures that we've included are 4.2 for the bonus, whilst the 2021 figure of just under a million pounds should still be there or thereabouts. Um, those future amounts, this, this, those in the region of 650, actually could drop off quite considerably from now that we may not receive those amounts, they could be a lot less than we forecast, depending obviously on the outcome of the consultation, but the indications in there are that there could be less in, in the future. That then has an impact on the capital programme funding uh, exception, um, because new homes bonus is used for the capital programme, so there may be some issues in the new capital programme if new homes bonus is uh, reduced considerably. Uh, and also, one last point, at 3.2, um, we added the table for 4.2 actually, we've included a 2% council tax increase. Uh, the consultation that was released last week did indicate that potentially districts could also have the 2% or £5 on a band D, whichever is higher. So there may, may be some additional flexibility for us there. Yeah. Thank you, Simone. It's, uh, things change quite quickly, don't they, in terms of finances? And obviously, uh, we don't know the implications in terms of district finances or the, what may or may not happen at the end of the month as well. So uh, lots of things that are somewhat difficult. Any comments from anybody? No. no. Um, the recommendations then are at section two. Um, I'm sure we'd all like to uh, thank our officers in quite trying times for uh, keeping us uh, fully informed as developments occur. So are we all happy to uh, agree the recommendations at 2.1 and 2.2? Right. Yeah. 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 right, that leads us on then to uh, the next item, which I believe is Quarterly review of strategic performance on page 28. Um, obviously, this is uh, a report we do receive regularly, and it is there for Cabinet to draw any um, concerns, etc. that they have. Is there anything as officers you want to draw our attention to? Mm -hmm. Not particularly. Um, we've already had the financial monitoring report at the previous cabinet you had the detailed report on the corporate yeah. financial um, position so we, we, we've already had that and um, on page 34 and 35 there is the summary of the positive aspects and areas of improvement so yeah we'll just draw attention to those thank you council 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 found out in internal scrutiny, which I think needs raising in the, the figures on page 34, was the uh, loss of car parking income to um, people having free parking from the gym. You know, we've got a gym in town, very successful it seems to be, but one thing we gave the gym was free parking, and that seemed to be um, losing us a significant amount of parking income. Unfortunately, at the internal scrutiny, we couldn't tell whether that was 100,000 or 200,000 pounds a year in free tickets being given out to the to the gym. But it is an issue that, um, uh, it also distorts markets, because obviously other gyms in town are struggling, um, whereas if you've got the, um, the, the pure gym having free parking, um, 
at particularly the road walk car park, which is a, a premium car park in the town centre, um, A, it loses income, and B, it potentially means the, the car park is fuller with people parking free and making it harder for people not to pay, or people who are not having free parking actually finding a space on a lower floor. We did, at the time when the free parking at the Pure Gym was proposed, both me and Michelle go to the uh, single member vote and express our concern about the impact of that uh, on our parking income. Um, and I think it would be useful if the Cabinet could actually ask how much we are losing through that free parking, both in terms of the value of the free parking being given out and also, particularly on Saturdays, the lack of parking spaces. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any points of clarification? Um, the present, for information really, um, I believe the present figure of uh, being down on that particular car park is £9,000. There are all other issues which are we investigating regarding the free usage of the car park. And the free usage is for the first two hours. And the way it operates is something we're a little bit concerned about. The, <coughs> the shortfall in that car park isn't just down to uh, the gym. There are footfall issues within the town, even though we are improving and transforming the town. There are still issues over people coming into car town and using our car parks. All of the car parks are up. The two main ones that tend to drop are the co-op car park and the road walk. But it has been noted. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sam. Uh, Neil, you're looking into... Yes, yes. Yeah. I have to say, it always surprises me about our car parks because whenever I come into town, you can't get I struggle to find a parking space, um, particularly on a Saturday. I think I often say this, I'm always on the top floor of, of Rate Walk when I come in, whether that's because I just can't find a space, uh, I don't think that's the case, but I think you know there are lots of thriving activities going on in the town centre. Yeah. And uh, lots of positives, actually. I, I find it a positive when you can't park easily. It shows that there must be lots of people in here. Um, and I'm pleased that uh, Councillor Conical has noted the new developments going on in the town centre and some new people coming in and uh, having their businesses here. And uh, we have some big plans moving forwards that I think will um, make our town even more vibrant. So, uh, excellent. Any other aspects on the report that people want to draw our attention to? Obviously, each cabinet member will be looking at areas of uh, for improvement and indeed the positive areas with relevant directors and service managers. That's something that they will be doing on a, a regular basis. And uh, I'm sure that any comments from opening and scrutiny will be fed back appropriately. OK, are we all happy to... Uh, Agree with the recommendations that basically are the note things at the moment. Okay, so we are happy <coughs> to uh, look at this. We've reviewed it and obviously we'll look at it going forward. So you're happy with that recommendation. Yes, yeah. All right. The next item is then recommendations from open and scrutiny, and there are not. Um, so um, we, we note those. There are no any other items that I've been informed of this evening. Can I thank everybody for their attendance and wish you a safe journey? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.